All right, welcome to your homework help. This is Math 7, Chapter 3, Lesson 5, looking at dividing integers today. Uh, the key thing with dividing integers, our key concepts for your lesson today, and that is just like multiplication, when we divide integers with different signs, then the sign, the, the answer is going to be negative. If the signs are different, we get negative. If we're dividing integers with the same sign, then the solution is going to be positive. So just like multiplication yesterday, here or whenever you do the last lesson, sorry, if they're different, you get negative. If they're the same, we get positive. So let's look at some of the homework samples here from your independent practice in your book, page 247. All right, so the math-wise, 18 divided by 9 happens to be 2. No problem there, but I have different signs of negative and a positive, so I'm going to have a negative 2 for my solution. If I look here, 100 divided by 10 is going to be 10, no problem, because 10 times 10 is 100 if I work back that way. But the signs are both negative, so I end up with a positive 10. Again, I don't need to write positive 10. It's inferred if there's no negative in front of it that it is positive. But check your teacher for how they want you to do that there. All right, 84, this becomes, it's not a fraction. I mean, it is a fraction, but it's just simply 84 divided by 12. 84 divided by 12 happens to be 7. Okay, and again, if you were using a calculator, you could type that in as 84 divided by 12, or you recognize that you can reduce here 12 times what gives me 84, um, and that's how you end up getting there. Um, so, but we have a positive divided by a negative, so the signs are different on the top and the bottom, so I end up with a negative 7 for my solution. On number 8, I have 21 divided by 7. Again, 21 divided by 7. However you want to look at that, or 7 goes into 21. It's really a basic math fact, though. 21 divided by 7 is 3, because 7 times 3 gives me 21. And because they're both negative, I end up with a positive answer for a positive 3. On number 10, I'm going to plug numbers in. I have r times s divided by 16. r is 12, s is a negative 4, and I'm going to divide that by 16. Well, 12 times 4 is 48, but it's a negative 48 divided by 16. And a 48 divided by 16 happens to be 3, but because it's a negative and a positive, I'm going to keep the answer as a negative 3 because the signs are different. And over here, number 8, or 12, we're going to plug in 8 minus the value of r, which is 12, over minus 2. This goes back to one of our earlier lessons. I'm going to turn that into add a negative, change that around. The signs here are different, so I find the difference, which happens to be 4, keeping the large absolute value, negative 4. So negative 4 divided by negative 2. Well, regular old 4 divided by 2 is 2, and because the signs are the same, I keep that as a positive answer for positive 2 for number 12. Moving over to our next page here some more sample uh, extra practice. If I have 32 divided by 8, 32 divided by 8 is 4, but because I have a positive and a negative, they don't match, they're different, I end up with a negative answer. 27 divided by 3 is 9, but again, I have a negative divided by a positive, the signs are different, so I end up with a negative answer. There's one more since we're here, 54 divided by 6 is 9, but a negative and a negative are the same, so that becomes a positive answer right there. This last one I'm going to do for you, we have divide negative 200 by negative 100. 200 divided by 100 happens to be 2, and the signs are the same, so I end up with a positive 2 as my solution for that problem. All right, hope that helps you a little bit on your homework tonight, and good luck on the rest of them.